Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. In this module, we shall be discussing about glaciers. Glaciers are a wonderful creation of nature. Glaciers are nothing but the compacted ice and uh, uh, according to the reports, in the last ice age, at the peak of last ice age, about 30 percent of the earth was covered by the glaciers and uh, about 30 percent of the oceans covered by the glaciers. Now about 10 percent of earth is covered by the glaciers. So, the learning objectives of this module are to understand the glaciers and its uh, formation, to gain knowledge about uh, various types of glaciers and to understand the glacial budget and mass balance of a glacier. And finally, we will also learn or we will try to understand different type of glacial landforms. So, now the question arises what is a glacier? Glacier is a mass of surface ice or land and formed by accumulation of snow. Glacier is defined as a large mass of perennial ice that originates on land by the crystallization of snow or other forms of solid precipitation and that shows evidence of past or present flow. I will suggest the students to please look into your books and try to find out that what different definition to the glaciers have been given by different scientists and different agencies. These glaciers store about 70 percent of the world's fresh water, means these are the biggest source of fresh water. Glacial ice crystals can grow to be as large as baseball. The largest glacier in the world is the Lambert Glacier that is in Antarctica. The width of this glacier is about uh, 100 kilometer and the length of this glacier is about 400 and uh, say some 35 kilometers. Now, the sources of water in glaciers and ice sheets. There are several sources of water in the glaciers and these sources include surface melting, dissipation of mechanical heat, geothermal heat, groundwater flow and surface runoff and liquid precipitation. Now, there are about uh, 47 countries which have glaciers. The glacier may be very small in size up to the size of a cricket ground or a football ground and these may be as long as 400 or 500 kilometer as I have just now told about uh, this Lambert glacier that is about 450 kilometer long. So, in this table we will see that what is the size of uh, different glaciers which are present in different countries. In New Guinea there is about uh, 3 square kilometer size glacier in Africa. The glacier size is about uh, 6 square kilometers in New Zealand, the glacier size is about 1600 square kilometers. In Scandinavia, the, the glacier size is about uh, 2490 square kilometer. In Central Europe, the size of the glacier is about 3785 square kilometers. In South America, glaciers uh, up to 25000 square kilometers are present. In Northern Asia, about 60,000 square kilometer glaciers are present in Antarctica and this uh, in Antarctica uh, the glacier size is about 77,000 square kilometer. When I say 77,000 square kilometer, it does not include the main ice sheet. In Central Asia, uh, this is uh, 115,000 square kilometer uh, glaciers, in North America about 124,000 square kilometers. In Arctic Islands, the size is about 27500,000 square kilometers and this also does not include the Greenland ice sheet. So, from here we get uh, idea that the size is highly variable of the glacier. These uh, in the examples which we have given one is very small uh, that is about 3 square kilometer, other is in, in 100,000 square kilometers. And uh, again uh, I am telling you that glaciers are present in a 47 countries. Now, the question arises that how the glaciers are formed. The formation of glaciers starts when snow remains in the same area for a year and when enough snow accumulates and transform into 
ice. So see, suppose this is ice that is deposited in the year 1 and it remains here and then the ice for the second year deposit over it. Then it leads to the formation of glaciers. So each year a new layer of snow is added and this layer, this new layer compress the previous layer that is the older layer and then because of this compression the snowflakes are, are transformed into granular snow by melting and refreezing and with the time the grains grow and the air pockets which are present between these grains these decrease inside and become more and more compacted as well as this leads to an increase in the density of the ice mass. Due to the melting and refreezing and pressure that is caused by new snowfall, the granular snow is converted into fern. The fern formation take place after about two winters. Over a period of time and due to pressure, partial melting and refreezing, the ferns grow together into large interlocked ice crystal. When the ice crystals are more compacted and very little amount of air space, air space left between them, then they are called as a glacial ice. So I am repeating it once again that first of all we get snowfall, snow ice, then this snow ice is comp compacted by the other uh, snow, uh, means first year we get snow, then we get uh, snow next year, then this compaction take place and by this compaction this leads to formation of uh, glacial ice and finally this glacial ice is converted into glacial mass. Now accumulation and ablation these are two very important terms when we talk about glacier formation. What is accumulation? Basically accumulation is the snowfall and snowfall normally takes at the higher peaks and ablation is the melting. So accumulation and ablation are two most important terms which are used in the formation of glaciers. Accumulation areas are in areas is the area where snowfall is accumulated. Usually these are at higher elevations. Mostly the accumulation take place in winter. Whereas ablation area that is the melting areas, ablations area are normally at lower altitudes where melting and evaporation take place. Ablation normally take place in the months of summer. So two words are or two processes are involved in the formation of glaciers. One is accumulation that take place at the higher altitude, second is ablation, ablation is nothing but melting that take place uh, at lower altitude. Accumulation take place in winter and ablation take place in the months of summer. Glaciers, if we talk about glaciers, glaciers are just like a river except that the movement of the mass is very, very slow. So these glaciers flow downhill due to the gravitational force generated by their own weight and the glacial velocity depends upon the thickness of glacier, temperature, bedrock and gradient. Generally, the upper layer in the glacier moves faster than the lower layer and movement take place by one or combination of the three processes and these three processes include internal deformation, basal sliding and bed deformation. Now we will try to know what are the different types of glacier, there are a number of different glaciers. So first of all we will learn about alpine glaciers. Alpine glaciers are found in mountain terrain and where the precipitation and temperature conditions present due to high elevation. Alpine glaciers occupy valleys usually that were created by steam erosion. In alpine glaciers mass flow take place down slope because of its own weight and gravity as I have told earlier. Alpine glaciers have two zones, zone of accumulation and zone of ablation. In this picture you will find that one is the zone of accumulation and other, uh, other one is the zone of ablation. Now when accumulation is more than ablation then uh, this uh, glacier will increase in 
size, advancement of glacier will take place. But when ablation is more than accumulation, means melting is more than accumulation, that time glacier will retreat in size. And there is also a line of equilibrium. Line of equilibrium means the rate of accumulation is equal to rate of ablation. So, we, we must understand here that how the advancement of glacier take place and how the retreat of glacier is take place. Advancement take place due to advancement take place when uh, this uh, accumulation is more than ablation and uh, retreat take place when ablation is more than advancement and line of equilibrium when rate of accumulation is equal to rate of ablation. You might have read in different newspapers, you might have seen on the television that uh, a number we get a number of time uh, news items about uh, this Gangotri and Yamunotri glacier that these are retreating. So, when, when we say these are retreating, this is because the ablation is more than accumulation. The ice movement in alpine glaciers take place from the zone of accumulation to zone of ablation. The largest alpine glaciers are Alaska and the Himalayas. Then uh, cross-sectional view of an alpine glacier showing internal flow line, zone of accumulation, snow line and zone of melting. By this figure, you can clearly understand about their advancement, about their retreatment, etc. Then continental glaciers. Continental glaciers exist where the appropriate conditions for ice formation occur because of high latitude. The continental glacier is much thicker in the central part. So, you try to understand here in this picture that these are thicker in the central part, but these are not thicker on the edges. And this uh, continental glacier is thinner from the edges. The ice and ice caps flow readily outward and downward in all directions from thicker side to thinner side. The zone of accumulation is the central part and zone of ablation is the surrounding. Now then, Calvin Glacier. Calvin Glacier has a terminus that ends in a body of water. And that the body of water that may be a river, that may be a lake, that may be a ocean uh, into and lose mass by calving means breaking of mass from the main glacier and form icebergs. So, in calving glaciers, icebergs are formed. Then niche glaciers, niche glaciers are very small in size. They occupy gullies and hollow on the slopes and appear as little more than large snow fields. Then Cirque Glacier, Cirque Glacier is a small glacier that forms within a Cirque Basin. The, the Cirque is a French term and it originate from the Latin word circus, means circle. Then hanging glaciers, these hanging glaciers originate high on the wall of a glacier valley and descends only part of the way to the surface of the main glacier. Then ice cap, what is ice cap? Ice cap is a dome shaped accumulation of glacier ice and perennial snow that completely covers a mountainous area or island. Then uh, ice field, ice field is a continuous accumulation of snow and glacier ice that completely fills a mountain basin or covers a low relief mountain plateau to a substantial depth. Then ice shelves, ice shelves are simply the floating sections of ice sheets. Ice streams, ice streams are fast flowing ice channels bordered by slower flowing ice with a velocity up to several kilometer per year. Then outlet glaciers, outlet glaciers are confined to the narrow valleys by the neighboring cliffs and by lateral moraines deposited during a geologically recent period of glacier expansion. Then Piedmont Glacier, Piedmont Glacier is a fan or lobe shaped glacier. This is located at the front of a mountain range. 
then polar glaciers polar glaciers are a glaciers with a thermal or temperature regime in which ice temperatures always remain below the freezing point then uh, reconstituted glaciers reconstituted glacier is a glacier formed below the terminus of a hanging glacier by the accumulation and reconstitution by pressure melting that is called as a uh, regulation of uh, ice blocks that have fallen and avalanched from the terminus of the hanging glacier then rock glaciers basically rock glacier is a glacier like landform that often heads in a cirque and consist of a valley filling accumulation of uh, angular rock blocks then temperate glaciers temperate glacier is with a temperature regime in which liquid water coexists with frozen water that is glacial ice during part or even all of the year then tide water glacier tide water glaciers are glaciers with a terminus that ends in a water body see earlier we have studied one glacier where in the starting is the water body in the other that uh, water body is at in tide water glacier the water body is at the end where it terminates and this water body uh, is like a ocean or a large lake then catchment glaciers catchment glaciers represent the superficial area of a glacial form where the glaciers receive and release the snow or ice material in different form and maintain the equilibrium of a glacier now we will try to learn about glacial budget and mass balance glacial budget decided by the accumulation and ablation as already we have discuss discussed if there is more accumulation of ice it shows a glacial advancement and if more melting or ablation that leads to glacial retreat the balance between both zones of accumulation and zone of ablation that decide the glacial budget the equilibrium line as shown in this figure is decided by the zone of accumulation and zone of ablation the position of equilibrium line changes every year yes this is very important to know that this equilibrium line is not fixed this will keep on changing depending upon the accumulation and ablation uh, if there is more uh, depending upon more snowfall or more melting now here i have shown an equation from the uh, that is b is equal to c plus a here this b is the mass balance of the glacier uh, and uh, c is the uh, this c is accumulation and a is uh, this uh, melting so from this equation very simple equation you can calculate the mass balance of a glacier then uh, glacial land forms so what are glacial land forms glacial land forms are grouped into erosional and depositional land forms erosional land forms are formed by removing materials and depositional land forms are formed due to retreating of ice erosional glacial land forms are formed by the erosion of bedrock when ice moves it erodes and when melts leaves behind sediment and these sediments are called as till the common land form of glacial deposition is moraine a moraine is unratified and unsorted deposit of sediments formed by grinding and erosive effect of a glacier so a new term has appeared that is moraine so we should try to know what are moraines moraines are glacial land forms and these are grouped into erosional and depositional land forms a moraine is any material transported and deposited by glaciers like a river carries all sorts of debris and silt with it flows and create deltas likewise glacier carries rocks and soil and form moraines a glacier act like a conveyor belt and carries sediment along with it and deposit at the end or sides of the glacier 
Actually, they, uh, generally there are three mechanisms by which these uh, materials are removed by the glacier and these three mechanisms or, or another very important thing is this glacier leads to the formation of uh, uh, landscapes. There are three mechanisms by which landscapes are formed uh, by the glacier. One mechanism is abrasion, second mechanism is uh, plucking and third mechanism is bulldozing. And it has also been found that glaciers convert V shaped valley into U shaped valley by their movement. Okay. Now, the moraines are of different types depending upon the location. Uh, then one is uh, lateral moraines. A lateral moraine forms along the sides of a glacier. Then medial moraine, medial moraine is formed where two glaciers meet then terminus moraines. Terminus moraines are formed at very end of a glacier. Then ground moraines, a blanket of glacier till deposited on all of the surfaces over which a glacier moves typically by moving ice. To summarize, in this module we have learned that what is a glacier what are the sizes of different glaciers and glaciers are present in about 47 countries. Uh, we have learnt about the formation of glacier that how the glaciers are formed. We have also learned in this module about different type of glaciers and we have learned about the glacier mass balance and we have learned about glacial landforms. At the end, I will suggest my students please make a list of uh, different glaciers and uh, I also give one assignment to the students that they should pen down that if all the glaciers are vanished from this earth, what will be its effect on the human populations, flora fauna and overall environment. Thank you.